Hello everybody. So today a quick video on Solar Edge. Solar Edge uh, provided some disappointing guidance, and that's kind of the main reason why the stock is down. This is just a general overview video I want to make about Solar Edge, and the the only point that I want to make come across in this video is that Solar Edge and Enphase they are not the same. Not the same companies. Not the same stocks. In fact, if you look at the chart. After the after hours drop that we are currently seeing, and by the time I record this video, it's down only 10%. So we'll see what it opens at tomorrow, but we're back at 71, 72 ish. So that's roughly at the level of all time lows that this stock uh, has gone through. We haven't really moved from the lows of the past few months on Solar Edge. Um, and if you look at Enphase, Enphase is of course falling in sympathy because the market you know, doesn't do a lot of digging. The market doesn't dig too deep. So it's falling in sympathy right now, uh, although not, not as much, right? Only 3%, so not that much. But if you look at Enphase compared to the lows, en Enphase is up uh, 68, you know, almost 70% up compared to the lows. So one asset here, Enphase has rebounded and another asset has not rebounded, and that is Solar Edge. And let me just show you why uh, right now, because they posted, of course, their earnings uh, this evening. I haven't listened to the call yet, but they just posted their earnings. And so you can see, if you look at the full year, well, yeah, 2023 was a down year compared to 2022. That is not surprising given the interest rates environment. But if you look at the, the, the drop, the reason why all of the solar stocks are down right now and not in early 2023 is because they've all experienced sudden drops as the interest rates were uh, greatly increased up until mid of 2023, they increased interest rates. And you can see, I mean, this is a company that, that's, that's cut in half its revenue in Q4 compared to Q3, almost cut it in half, not quite, but almost um, from Q2 to Q3. So they keep having and having their revenue. And if you look at perhaps what is even more um, uh, concerning, in my view, is is the gross margin. You know that whenever I value a stock, I, I look at gross margin as a clear indication of the economic power of the firm. And gross margin for for Solar Edge is not holding. The gross margins are headed in the wrong direction when it comes to Solar Edge. Uh, is there a pricing power issue? Because the gross margin is 3.3%. You know, I always use non-GAAP numbers. I don't believe in gap accounting, you know, dogma and all that stuff. I always, I much prefer non-gap. If I look at non-gap, it's 3.3%. Again, a number that's much closer to the financial reality of the firm. 3.3%, um, which, by the way, would be negative without the IRA benefit because they got 900 basis point, 9%. They got 9% of manufacturing tax credit in there. Otherwise, they would be non-gap negative. That's okay. Enphase gets a major IRA benefit too. But if you look at what Enphase posted, um, two weeks ago, they, what did they post? They posted with IRA benefit 44 to 47 percent um, uh, gross margin. So that's actually what they guided, but it was similar in, in the, the quarter they posted. So 44 to 47 percent margin for Enphase versus 3 percent for uh, Solar Edge. So the margins are, you know, Enphase is one order of magnitude above in margin, um, and even within that, even without the IRA benefit. Enphase is earning between 40 and 43 percent in Q1 as far as the earnings go. So for one company, the, the margins are holding steady. That's Enphase. And Enphase is demonstrating pricing power with margins being steady to increasing and the revenues dropping, of course, but the margins are still steady and increasing. For Enphase, not only is the revenue dropping, but the margins, are, have, you know, they've plummeted from 32 percent to 3 percent. So the margin has been divided by 10. So this margin Margins are not very good. Let's look at the revenue guidance quickly from Q4 reported, Q4 2023 reported what they just reported to what they just guided in Q1. And you can feel free to read the guide here at 175 to 215. I take the midpoint. When I take the midpoint, I'm seeing that Solar Edge is guiding minus 39% quarter over quarter. On the other end, I do the same calculation for our end phase. End phase has guided minus 8% quarter over quarter. 
In both cases, that's bad, but end phase is not getting hurt nearly as much by this slowdown than solar edge. And end phase has clearly stated that Q2 will be the bottom with growth in the second half. I don't see that statement in the guidance for solar edge. I have to go to the call and see what they say in the call, but right now I'm not seeing any of that statement. And what I want to conclude in this video is that you may remember, you know, a year ago, nine months ago on this channel, I spent a lot of time going through the differences between micro inverters and string inverters. And to me, these two companies are, once again, not the same, entirely different animals. One of them uses micro inverters, that's, that's end phase, and then so Solar Edge uses string inverters. So string inverters are the legacy technology, they are the old technology, they are bulky, they, they are heavy. String inverters use transformers from the past. If you ever open up a string inverter, you'll see how old that tech is. On the other hand, micro inverters, which is what Enphase still sells, it's a state of the art semi. It's fully automated manufacturing lines. There's, there's very little labor that's required. And if you if you study Enphase and you, and you look at what's coming next, next, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, the string inverters, you know, they're not, they're not going to be much better because they're able to an answer, um, they're, they're able to use bigger solar panels and they're better because there's more power to the string inverters well i called your attention to gan to gallium nitride which nitride which is going to be in the iq 9s and iq 10 the last call of solar edge was a uh, sorry of enphase sorry was very bullish on gallium nitride and what that's going to do in the next gen of micro inverters that enphase will introduce next which will have the gan and so that means those micro inverters are going to get more and more powerful they're going to be able to handle bigger and bigger solar panels that's coming up next i don't see i don't foresee many more developments in string inverters except making them bigger bulkier heavier but aside from that i don't see how you can evolve the technology micro inverters are also and i think it's unarguable they are more compelling for the residential sector uh, and that's because they are the bulk of the market and why are they more compelling for residential sector because micro inverters you can do systems as low as 1500 watts you can you can even do balcony solar if you listen to the micro inverter call to the to the end phase call they do balcony solar those micro inverters they can scale down and they can scale up easily to any size but when it comes to string inverters and this actually surprised solar edge a, a few calls ago um, string inverters solar edge is seeing a lot of a lot of a lot of pickup in the commercial sector and string inverters they are doing very well in the commercial sector people are compelled by string inverters in the commercial sector. Well, the problem is what? Commercial real estate, commercial sector is not as big of a market as residential, right? We all have homes and people want to invest in their homes. It's, it's a tougher sell to sell the commercial market in my view. And plus micro inverters are 25 or, uh, have a 25 year warranty versus 12 year warranty for string inverters. So again, the technology here is winning in my view. Then we also have to think about down the road. You know, the IRA is, is passed until 2033 and in a meaningful extended in 2035 because we have two phase out years. So the right way to think about the IRA subsidies the IRA benefit in the United States is it's fully gone in 2035. So we have subsidies in place for these businesses until 2035. Well, guess what? The way the subsidies were written, Solar Edge only get 6.5 cents, right? 6.5 cents. We should read, read dollar. These, these are dollars. They only get 6.5 cents per watt AC on a Solar Edge product versus 11 cents per watt AC on a straight on a micro inverter on a micro inverter and keep in mind the micro inverters are going to get much more powerful with gallium nitride coming up so the IRA subsidies I mean I, I hate to say it like that I, do, I don't know if it's how it went but the IRA subsidies were written for the American giant in the space it's as though those subsidies were tailor made to the giant in the space, which is Enphase. Enphase is the US leader, and the, the, the US money of subsidies has been tailored to fit whatever product is sold by the US leader. Sometimes I think it was by design. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it was a coincidence. And as a result of that, Enphase is well suited to benefit from, from these two plants that they have in the US. Also, if you look at the Enphase product, microinverters are very, very small. The form factor allows for mass 
mass manufacturing. It allows for easy international shipping, right? Because the big, the cheap advantage of microinverters is that they're tiny, they're small, they can be shipped anywhere, right? String inverters are actually very healthy, very heavy, very bulky. A lot of installers do not like because they have to lift those. They have to lift those machines and they don't like that, right? AC coupled systems. What a lot of people criticized AC coupled systems for is, oh, it's inefficient. Oh, we lose, we, we have to convert the current two times or three times depending on the use and thus it's less efficient. We should, we should be using DC coupled systems. Well, Perhaps an engineer would win this argument, perhaps. But the, the businessman is going to win the argument of the AC coupled systems. Because if you have the AC coupled systems, which is what Enphase sells, which means that you have, to, you have to do multiple conversions, so you convert the power from the roof to the battery, from the roof to the grid, from the roof to the use, and then when it's a battery, you store the electricity in DC, of course, and you have to revert it back to the grid or revert it back to the house, right, to power your house. And then if you add electric uh, electric chargers, of course, electric vehicles are DC. So that's another set of microinverters. So essentially, AC coupled systems, and, 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 and um, you know, this is just broad strokes back of the napkin, but AC, AC coupled systems allow you to sell two to three times more power worth of microinverters. And these microinverters are all eligible for the 11 cents. So you can sell many, many more microinverters compared to a DC system like Solar Edge, where you sell way less because you only need one central inverter. And then there's other debates. Uh, one debate is about shadow, shadow performance. This, this is an endless technical debate. Which is best for a shadowy roof? Is it best to have microinverters or is it best to have uh, uh, string inverters with optimizers as a patch and people people debate this they go through curves and they look at during the day and they look at clipping these are these are endless debates about minute little details what is not a detail though is that is the redundancy of a microinverter microinverter systems are anti-fragile if there is breakage somewhere if a system still works you don't lose power in the string inverter system, if if, the str if your inverter, if your central inverter breaks, you lose power. You're done. Your system, you have a service call. Your system is, is is over, and so hopefully that doesn't happen when you really need the power. So you don't have the redundancy in string systems, right? Lastly, microinverters make home systems easily expandable and. By the way, this is not me saying end phase is better than Solar Edge. This is me saying that that. Per my understanding of this sector, per my knowledge of this sector, I believe the, the superior technical solution is that of microinverters. That, that's just my belief. You could you could believe the opposite, and then if you believe the opposite, you're going to prefer solar edge as an investment. But I think before you invest in solar, you have to you have to to pick your tech. You know, pick your technology. Which technology do you think is the best? There's a, there's a clear technological choice to be made with solar. String inverters, the old legacy technology that is more reliable, as they say in the marketing, been around for a long time. That's marketing, by the way. Or do you have the newer, the newer kid on the block, which is Enphase, which which came around later, which which is which is a technology that's much closer to consumer electronics. You know, it seems clearer and clearer to me that one technology will win, and when you choose one or the other, you're kind of making a bet. And some people buy both stocks because when they, they want to edge their bets. So they sort of edge, right? Because So they buy both stocks because they want to hedge the bets. But, but in my view, my second biggest position in my portfolio is Enphase. I really, really, really fundamentally believe Enphase as the better product as far as the inverter space. And knowing that as much as we love to think of these companies as these holistic systems for your home, uh, the, the bulk of the business is still inverting the current. That's that's where the business lies. Is is, is you have DC so electricity provi provided by your solar panels are in DC to be for it to be usable by your house it needs to be in AC for it to be usable by the grid it needs to be AC and so the debate is which technology do we use to turn that DC power into that AC current 
and 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 you're dealing with technical standards here. And which technical standard do you think is going to win? I think I think that's a question one has to ask. One has to ask themselves before they buy into these stocks. And in my view, it's very very clear. And I've defended this on the channel over and over again. And my view is very clear that micro inverters is are winning. And so I'm consistent with myself. I invest in Enphase um, and not Solar Edge, but Solar Edge. The system it works better, in my view, uh, for commercial systems, and so maybe you're investing for solar for the commercial system, for the commercial setups, for the commercial potential, and in that case, you'd be very interested in Solar Edge. Uh, one last thing I'll say about storage system. So you may know Solar Edge as kind of a solar uh, storage system, uh, a little bit like a Tesla uh, Mega Pack. I was reading their their uh, investor presentation. It's noteworthy that their other segment is also going down. You know you. You, you would at least like, like in the case of Tesla, you see te you see Tesla the, the, the sales of vehicles is not going up as much, but the the the, the storage, the energy storage uh, division is doubling. We are not seeing that doubling in the energy storage for Solar Edge, so uh, this also may have implications uh, for 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 other stocks like, like STEM, for example, or Fluence. So, anyways, um, this is as much of a question of an investment as it is a question of a technical standard. In my view, the numbers show that Enphase is doing better with this slowdown. The margins are better. The revenue drop is not nearly as bad. Um, but I think the sector as a whole will rebound as soon as the interest rates drop. The question is, will one stock rebound higher than the other? And, and I, I've, I've made it clear that I believe so. Uh, and I believe that winning stock is Enphase. Uh, nonetheless, if Enphase dips tomorrow, that may be a dip buying opportunity. Anyways, this was no financial advice, not investment advice. This is just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. I appreciate your likes, your subscribes. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.